maradunk tovább a filmesipar területén, hogy a következő etapunk, hogy a Hollywoodi színész találkozó, mégpedig Spencer Lee Wilding következik. Fogadjátok őt nagy tapsa! Sziasztok! Hello Spencer, how are you? Yeah, very well. How are okay, you? cheers. So, uh, let's get the show on the road. Uh, you have been uh, inside many iconic characters uh, from Hagrid's. You have been Hagrid's double. You, you were a White Walker, and of course, Darth Vader. Um, is there any uh, role or creature or figure that that has grown uh, close to you? That's your favorite. Uh, well, I started on the Harry Potter films first. My first character was playing the werewolf in the Prince of Azkaban. Then I doubled Agrid. Then I played one of the knights in Dan Flower's Part 2. And then I played Greyback and Death Eater in the Harry Potter Wizards Unite game. Um, but all my characters are very uh, connected to me and I'm connected to them because uh, they're not you, you're portraying the spirit of them. And uh, yeah, they're all very close to me. I do love playing a monster. My mum used to say to me when I was a kid, um, stop kicking people and stop being a monster. I ended up being a professional kickboxer and being monsters in the film, so that was over like 30 years ago. Um, is it true that you were uh, discovered by a portrait photographer? This is correct, yes. Um, when I took the Welsh and British kickboxing title, um, my mum said to me, go to uh, the local shop, uh, photography shop, for the Welsh entitled belt around me. It was a very fr proud mother. And at the time, there was a music group called Steps. Anybody heard of Steps? Was anybody in the room? Anybody in the room? Anybody in the room? Anybody in the room? Anyway. So yeah, so that's how it started for me. Um, I got uh, approached by a sports agency and then I got an acting agent later down the, the road and then 50 films later I'm here talking to you. És így vezetett fel egy portréfotósnál, uh, és onnan kezdődött a karrierem, és 50 filmek később már itt vagyok és beszélhetek veled. Now, uh, well, you're, no, you're no stranger to masks, prosthetics uh, and the like. Uh, which do you prefer, the, the practical uh, effects and the prosthetics or the digital? Um, well, I've, I've played both, really. Probably the l latest character I did was digital. That was uh, Men in Black International, playing Luca Brase. So it's just dots from here was me, and the rest was uh, my voice and my expressions. So it's, it's amazing what they can do now. I prefer uh, real makeup, you know? I'm old school. But, uh, you know, a little bit of CGI here, a little bit of real makeup put it all together, looks great. I think if it's all CGI, I think you lose a little bit of energy there, right? But who knows, people see different things. Az a kérdés, hogy, hogy uh, a valós, uh, valós kiegészítőket és maszkokat szereted inkább, vagy pedig uh, mi a, mi a véleményed a CGI-ról? A válasz pedig úgy hangzott, hogy, hogy uh, mind a kettőt szeretem, egyik, egyik sem ismeretlen számomra. Uh, jobban szeretem a, a valós maszkot, én ilyen szempontból old school vagyok, de dolgoztam már úgy, hogy mindenféle pöttyök voltak a, a melkasomon, és csak a, a hangomat és a, a gesztusokat vettem, tehát az is nagyon király volt. I'm glad you mentioned CGI, because these days uh, the use of CGI characters in movies is very prevalent, but also there are uh, stuff like deepfakes. And what do you think uh, of the, uh, the prevalence of CGI and, and deepfakes? Do you think it uh, puts the, danger, uh, the, the work of actors at uh, risk? Uh, so the question was, what do I think of CGI C and real makeups? Yeah, and also deep fakes. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know when they put uh, your face on someone else. Oh yeah, I know, I get you. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, like I was when working on uh, Star Wars, you know, uh, Professor, you know, uh, talking, you know, he, the actor's not here no longer, but they, they brought a, an actor in to portray him and they put like a, a 3D screen around him, which is, which is great, you know? They, then they live for on forever and ever and ever. So that's beautiful. Um, I, you know, what they do with the CGI is great. You know, there's only certain things a human being can do. 
and then there's only certain things that the real stunts with wires can do. So you need the CGI there to make the real, real magic happen, you know? So put it all together and you've got a show. But I think if it's too much CGI, then you might lose yourself a little bit in the CGI. You know, but a, a good performer can bring it, you know, uh, with, a, with a really good makeup artist to, to put the appliance on. And then the actor does his job and everybody else does the job and everybody's happy. Yeah? Um, a kérdés az volt, hogy, um, hogy mivel rengeteget dolgozunk most a nem a már CGI-jal, mi a véleményed erről, illetve mi a véleményed a deepfake-ekről. És uh, mi azt mondta, hogy uh, az a helyzet, hogy, um, hogy uh, a Star Wars filmekben volt ilyen, hogy, hogy más színészre tették rá klasszikus karakterek arcát Tarkinál és Lejánál például. Ez csodálatos volt, hiszen ők így aztán örökké élhetnek de úgy is gondolja, hogy, hogy túlságosan sok CGI-jal az ember elveszti az energiát. Ezért fontos az, hogy a színész is elvégezze a munkáját, a CGI is elvégezze a munkáját, és, csodálat, és, és a végérmény egy nagyon jó minőségű műsor lesz. Now, uh, the technology has advanced a lot during your career. How much uh, did it change your work, or your, the shoots you're uh, working on? Well, I've been filming now for 20 years, so... Um Uh, I remember the first job, playing a werewolf, the suit that we were wearing and the stilts. So you know, like you, the pressure was there, so it gives you that hind leg, leg of, a, of a werewolf. You know, the stilts were, we were the first actors to go on these stilts, myself and Monitz van der Broek, a Dutch ballet dancer actor. Um, now it's a lot different, you know, because we, were, we were, went through hell, really, you know, but we were loving it at the same time, so it balanced it out, you know. A bit of hell and heaven together. Um, It's advanced a lot, you know, because um, they've got better stilts and things like that if they want us to take us higher. Um, and then there's, there's, there's lighter suits you can wear and, and obviously they put the CGI to it. Like uh, I played uh, on a film called Green Lantern. Does anybody know that film? Well, Green like Lantern. Lampash. DC. Yes, one. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Pause on my own for a minute then. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a character called Kilowog and I play Kilowog and we filmed that in New Orleans And um, they put me on stilts, so the stilts were about here. So I was like half a ton alien, you know? But I had dots all over me. But these more advanced plaster stilts as such, because I could run around, I could do reverse spinning back kicks and all sorts of things, you know? But on the original stilts we did on Harry Potter in the beginning, uh, you couldn't really do anything on them, you know? As soon as it went from flat to terrain out like next to the tree, Uh, when the, 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 the weeping li- willow tree, whatever it is. Um, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't do anything. You had to put a wire in us and then you start to lose the performance. Uh, yeah, so it's come a long way. Has that answered your question? Az a kérdés, hogy a technológia mennyire változtatta meg a karrierét, mennyire hatott a karrierére. Húsz éve kezdett el volt először a színész, akkor farkas embert játszott, és arról beszélt, hogy hogy milyen érdekes gólyalábakat kellett fölvennie, mert hogy a, hogy a farkas hátsó lábát e, tudja imitálni. E, és ez, ez, ez később nyilván ez, e, ez sokkal tovább fejlődött, például cgi jal Így aztán, amikor a, a zöld lámpásban e, szerepelt, akkor egy hatalmas, nagy darab, fél tonnás éljent kellett játszania, de az, azzal is simán tudott verekedni. Még például, amikor az eredeti Harry Potter filmben játszott, az ott lévő gólyalábakkal és kiegészítőkkel nem tudott rendesen mozogni. Now, which do you prefer more, working on a huge, big franchise like Star Wars or Harry Potter or independent, standalone films or even TV shows? Yeah, I've, I've been answered, good question. I've been answered that a few times, but a camera is a camera in front of me. You know, obviously, you, they've got a bigger part to play with when they go to the bigger budgets, and then I've helped out on zero budget films, you know, because um, you've got to give a bit back. Um, I love them both. You know, it's the character, really. You know, not, not so much about how big their budget is and this, that and the other. I just like to portray the character. I'm very passionate about my work and uh, the characters like to portray me. They like to have their fun with me as well. So uh, we, we meet each other in the middle. Um, you know, you like w- working on Doctor Who's. They're not big budgets. So they've got to bring the actors in that can, you know, get it um, within a couple of takes. Otherwise you start uh, going into overtime and things like that. So um, I'm very experienced now, so I'm, I'm quite quite okay with my work um, so the answer is it's all one big party really you know so it's all good uh, 
franchise-ban, vagy franchise filmekben, független filmekben, vagy inkább tévében szeretnék inkább szerepelni. Ez igazából attól függ, hogy milyen, milyen szerepet kapok, mit kell eljátszanom. A, persze kérdés nyilván a, a, a költségvetés, de valójában a karakter az, ami, ami e, igazán vonz. Nagyon szeretem a munkámat, e, így például, amikor Dr. Who-kon, Dr. Who epizódokon dolgoztam, azt nagyon szerettem, nem kellett túlságosan, nem volt, e, nem volt túl munka, nem kellett sokáig elhúzni, e, de igazából az a helyzet, hogy szeretem a munkámat, úgyhogy bármelyiket szívesen játszom. You worked in lots of these. Uh very famous franchises and, and titles uh, that involves lots of famous uh, actors and superstars. Uh, are there any uh, who were your favorites who were, you were best to work with? I was, I was always a fan of Robert De Niro. So, I, 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 you know, I ticked off that working on a film called Stardust. I was one of the pirates on that. Um, but I'm a fan of the, the, all the, when I started on the Harry Potters, I had no acting background at all. I was a professional fighter. So uh, when they brought me onto that, I was working with all Amani, Ron, and, and you know Rupert, and they were only kids, they were only 14 years old, you know. So me and Alan Rickman were singing Happy Birthday to Daniel Radcliffe on his 14th birthday, <laughs> uh, and then uh, you know I worked with them several years later. Uh, I've, 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 I've you know worked with Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pratt, yeah, everybody really. I've sort of yeah, I've worked with a lot of them, and um, I love them all. I get the love back, so it's all great, you know what I mean? But, I, you know, I did look up to Robert De Niro. He was one of my faves. I'd like to work with him now, because I got to work with him over 10 years ago, so I was a bit shy, you know? So, but now I'd have a good conversation with him, but he was just walk. I was walking past him at Shepard's Studios, just like that, just smiling at him, you know? He was like, Arr! I was like, oh, yeah, he was just smiling. But now I'd uh, have a good conversation. But, yeah, Robert De Niro's my fave. A rengeteg filmen és franchise-on dolgoztál, rengeteg híres színésszel, van-e köztük kedvenced? Igen, Robert De Niro a kedvencem, ő vele viszonylag korán a Csillagpor című filmben dolgoztam együtt, akkor egy kalózt játszottam. De amikor a Harry Potterben szerepeltem, és akkor még csak profi harcosnak minősültem, akkor igazából minden színésznek a rajongójává váltam. Így például énekeltünk Daniel radcliffe a 14. születésnapján, boldog születésnapot, Uh, szeretem Chris Evans, Chris pratt uh, Oliver Moore-t, uh, és igazából uh, nem általán megint így a tapasztalatok után uh, megint Robert De Niro-val dolgozni. Nagyon jót lehetne vele beszélgetni. I'm sure uh, these big projects you're working on uh, employ very strict NDAs and stuff like that. How, c- how do you manage or how do you handle uh, leaks and uh, spoilers that are all over well they're not coming from my camp so it's okay you know but um uh, probably one of the hardest secrets to keep was playing vader because um we we filmed it in 2016 and it and then it got leaked straight away that spencer wilding's reading for darth vader and in the suit running around you know well walking around using the force choking people out on set and that was for 12 months you know So I was, uh, it, they, they said in the paper this is the worst kept secret, you know? <laughs> But I had to be, I'm signed and sealed. Well, you know, if you want to work again, you've got to keep your mouth shut. Uh, I was having newspapers knocking on the door, asking me this, that, and the other, and it was all, I can't confirm or deny, I'm afraid, you know? But um, <clears throat> yeah, they come out, you know? I've got several films ready to come out. I've got Dungeons and Dragons, I've got Borderlands, I've got Devil, I've got the remake Toxic Avengers. Um, so I've got some cool stuff ready to come out, but that's, lot, that's all that we can say. You know, my agent said I can tell you the, the production's names, that's it. So. Amikor az ember filmeken dolgozik, akkor alá kell írni a mindenféle titottatási egyezményeket, szerződéseket. Hogy kezeled a spoilereket, kiszivárgásokat, ilyesmiket? Az a helyzet, hogy ezek általában nem tőlem jönnek. Így aztán például az egyik leg keményebben őrzött volt az, amikor, amikor védert kellett játszanom. É, gondoljunk bele, az 2016-ban volt, és akkor szivárgott ki valami újságnak, hogy Spencer Wilding uh, védelre próbál, és így aztán uh, ezt végül a, a, a lehető legrosszabban őrzött titoknak is uh, definiálhatnánk. A, a helyzet az, hogy, hogy most is rengeteg minden dolgozom, de a, a lényeg az, hogy, hogy csöndben vagyok, és nem uh, szívárhatatok semmit. Így dolgozom például Dungeons and Dragons filmen, Borderlands filmen és ilyesmiken. 
the, this, this question I have to ask you. When, when the first time you put on the Vader costume, did you feel compelled to do the breathing? Yeah, well, you know, you might have seen some interviews. I remember on the first day on set, and I was doing my dialogue, they gave me additional dialogue. And I was like, I was going, uh, don't be too sure that the Emperor is as impressed with you as you are with yourself. <laughs> and they were going to me, it's okay, Spen, we can put that in post, you know? I was like, oh, okay, because you get right into the character and everybody knows who the character is. I was five years old when I, when I first seen Star Wars, you know, 1977. And it was such an iconic character. And they, you know, it was, he's supposed to be still the most iconic bad guy on silver screen. I thought, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a bad guy, he's okay, but I didn't get it, he was the, he was the iconic bad guy. But when the presence taken over me, you know, then I went, all right, <laughs> whatever you say, you know, and let him do his thing. They use you, they use you these big powerful characters. So, um, uh, yeah, and I was, it, it, you actually feel the force, you know? My, I live in Wales, I'm Welsh, and my brother lives in London, and I was like, you know, well, let's see how these powers work then. I'm like, ah, uh, and he rings me up, go, what, what are you doing? You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, you know, power the force and all that. I'll make a kid as now. I'm going to serve that for Vader costume, Vader, uh, to set it, I can elkezdtél-e, elkezdtél-e lélegezni. Ez egy érdekes dolog, mert amikor az első, biztos láttál egy csomó interjúmat, mikor az első nap, amikor ott voltam a díszletben, akkor elkezdtünk beszélgetni arról, hogy jó, jó, és akkor mi a párbeszéd? Azt mondták, hogy nem, nincs párbeszéd. És amikor elkezdtem imitálni Véder hangját, azt mondta, jó, 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 megcsinálhatjuk mind a kettőt. Öt éves voltam, amikor az első Star Wars film kijött, 1977-ben, tehát persze Véder az egyik leg Uh, ismertebb gonosztevő a világon, sőt, talán a legismertebb gonosztevő a világon. Uh, Úgyhogy amikor, amikor uh, ott vagy, akkor így gondolod, de amikor felveszed a ruháját, akkor átveszi az uralmat fölötted, és, és ő, tesz, ő csinálja azt, ő azt csinálod, amit mond. Uh, nem tehetsz mást. Így aztán uh, azt is megpróbáltam, hogy vajon az erő működik-e. Én vers vagyok, versben élek. Felhívtam a testvéremet, aki Londonban élt, és, és uh, azt mondtam neki, nézzük meg, próbáljuk meg, hogy működik az erő, és uh, elkezdtem szorongatni a levegőt, ő pedig azt mondta, ú, Isten, Isten, kapok levegőt! He's good at his job, really, he's really good, he's got an amazing memory, I want your memory. <laughs> um, throughout your career, who has been an inspiration to you, or where, where does inspiration come to you uh, for your work? Um, my inspiration has been my family and stuff like that, you know, I've been... I've been, uh, I, I couldn't read or write till I was 32 years old, so it's been a very challenging, you know, of all dreams to pick was acting world when you can't read or write at such a late, I'm very dyslexic, uh, but now I'm, I'm fine. So uh, I sort of look at myself as a different person. So I'm proud of him, well done, Spen, for where you're still in the game, you know, uh, things like that. And, you know, I, I, just, I just love people, you know, I'm sat here, I get invited all over the world to speak to you guys and answer your questions and I look up to you guys as well, you know, thanks for following us and stuff, you know, taking, a, taking an interest in my career. Uh, honnan merítesz inspirációt? Uh, az egyszerű válasz az, hogy a barátaimból és a családomból. Uh, végül is színész vagyok, nem lehettem író, hiszen uh, nagyon keményen diszlexiás voltam, de uh, úgy érzem magam, hogy, hogy megváltoztam. Magamra nézek és azt mondom, Szép munka, Spen. Szeretem a munkámat, szeretem az életemet, szeretem, hogy meghívnak engem ilyen eseményekre, és ahol találkozhatom veletek, és rátok is fölnézek. Nagyon jó, hogy itt vagytok. What would be the single piece of advice you would What would be the single piece of advice you would give to someone who would follow you in your footsteps or would like to do similar work? I uh, set your own footsteps, you know, um, make your own path. But if you're going to go into this, this world, especially for the young ones, um, why be thick-skinned, take rejection as a positive, not a negative. Because every time you go for an audition and you knock on that door and you don't get the role, it's a positive because another casting agent has seen you and they've got very good memories like the guy here. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and you're in, you know, follow your dreams. But sometimes if you've got a dream like this, you must get a normal job to feed that dream. Don't live off your parents, you know, you need life skills. So 
and just keep on going and, and never stop, ever stop. And don't let an, anybody else say to you that you can't do it, you know? Look at my journey. Uh, you know, a lot of people signed me off when I was a kid in school. Um, you know, and, and yeah, just, just, just do that and, and be very careful crossing the road and eat your sprouts. Mi lenne az egyetlen tanács, amit uh, olyan embereknek adnál, akik uh, a te utadat szeretnék járni? Ne az én utamat járják, hanem a sajátjukat. Uh, törjenek utat maguknak, uh, legyen vastag a bőrük, mert uh, nem, mindig, uh, nem mindig fognak pozitív visszajelzést találkozni. És az a helyzet, hogy amikor az ember meghallgatásokkal jár és valaki nem veszi föl, az is pozitívum, mert az azt jelenti, hogy uh, esélyed van egy következő szerepet megcsinálni valahol máshol. Kövesd az álmaidat, és legyen álmod, legyen egy normális munkád, amivel az álmot épített táplálod, hiszen valahonnan annak is jönnie kell. Sose állj meg, küzdj mindig, és nézd rám, én engem leírtak, amikor, amikor iskolába, iskolába jártam, és mégis itt vagyok. My final question before opening the floor uh, to some other questions is, you mentioned a few future projects you will be in, but rumor also has it that you'll be starring in HBO Max's Bad Girl. Is there any scoop you can give us? Uh, um, we, we are signed and sealed, but if you've seen it on the press, then you know that's what you can see. But um, I can't say any more than that, I'm afraid. But I'm sure it's going to be a great show. Yeah. We all are. Uh, ami a jövőt illeti, uh, az, a, az, a, az a hír járja, hogy szerepelni fogsz az HBO Max uh, új Bad Girl sorozatában. Erre tudsz valamit mondani? Hát az a helyzet, hogy azon kívül, hogy remélem, hogy nagyon jó lesz, uh, semmi más nem tudok mondani. És akkor most itt a lehetőség kérdezni Spencer-től. Van, van-e kérdés se valakinek? Biztos, hogy van. Érzem, érzem az erőben a rezgést. Ott a kollégánál a mikrofon, nála, nála lehet érdeklődni. We got one. Ott. <laughs> I thought they were going to send me over the plane then. <laughs> Hi, I want to ask that if you had the chance, do you want to play any famous lesser killers like Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees? Well, all day long. All day long. I'd like, I'd, you know, Jason, you know, any of them iconic characters. I bring it as well, you know, because I, I like to go to the dark side. I'm nice on the outside, but put me in front of a camera, you, you, I, I'll bring any presents, you know. All day long, I'd like to cut some people up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And uh, I can see myself living in a little cabin somewhere and pinching some, you know, walkers, start sort of cutting them up, feeding them to my dog. <laughs> it was a bit deep now, sorry about that. 18, sorry kid. Uh, but yeah, no, I'd love to play a character like that. But you know, I'd like them to bring a character that was new, but can fit into them old days. You know, like a Jason, you know, or a Freddy, something like that. You know, or a Hellraiser. Let's bring a new one. You know, and uh, I, I've played a few cult films. What are due to come out as well? So with some remakes. So uh, we'll see where they go. You know what I mean, I hope you like them. Good question. Next, come on, let's come on. Következő. Here we go, we got the run. Ooh. Hi, I want to ask you, what's the role that uh, you felt most, most uh, close to yourself? What, what was your uh, role? Yeah, um, I've got a background of security work because I was a Welsh British kickboxing champion, undefeated pro boxer, Welsh British European. Uh, so I used to work the nightclubs. And there's a film called Green Street. Have you seen Green Street? Right, it's a green, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a Lionsgate film. And there's, a, you know, a football team called uh, Millwall in the UK. Well, my character is the head of Millwall. So he's been out several years now, but he's, uh, he was very close to how I was at that time, you know? We used to, you know, we used to fight a little bit in the clubs and walk away from it. So, um, So his name was Mason, and you smash your face in. He says a lot of other things, but you can't because there's kids in here. You know what I mean? So uh, it's an 18, but have a little watch of that. It's called Green Street 3, Never Back Down. Have you heard of Boyuka, Scott Atkins? Yeah, he's the head of West Ham. I'm the head of Millwall. And I look up to Scott like I looked up to Van Damme and Bruce Lee and things like that. So when I took the job on, you know, it was a low-budget thing as well. And... And I, they said who the lead is. So Scott Adkins. I said, so I get to fight Scott Adkins. I went, oh, I work it for free. 
Do you know what I mean? I didn't, nicked a few quid. But definitely watch Green Street 3 because me and Scott have a right good rumble. Yeah? I'm tall, but I can move. Do you know what I mean? Egy utolsó kérdésre van még időnk. One final question. Who, who will it be? One more. Oh, come on. Come on. One Make more. Make me feel popular. A little bit. <laughs> Here we go. Front, front seat. Save the best till last. I would like to ask... Um, sorry. Uh, All right. I would like to ask, um, why acting right after kickboxing? How did you first discover acting and why did you take such a sudden turn from kickboxing? Well, probably a lot of actors or whatever you dream of, you want to be the best hairdresser in the world or the best builder or the best whatever. Sometimes you carry that dream from when you were a kid, you know? And I, as far as I can remember, I'm quite spiritual, I'm quite connected to my p future, you know? And I knew I was going to get into the films later on in life. So I, I asked my gods, my thoughts, whatever you want to call it. All right, so I'm going to be an actor, okay, yeah. So how are you going to do this? So a voice came back to me and said, right, you're going to be a, a famous kickboxer, boxer. And it gave me a guy in the audience with a fat cigar going, hey, you want to be in the movies? He wasn't there, but when I took the Welsh and British title, I thought to myself, oh, well, this must be the entertainment thing, right? But when I had my pictures taken, and then a couple of days later, the photographer said, hey, Spen, have you ever thought about being in the films? You got a good look. This light bulb went off in my head that I had when I was a kid. And I went, carry on. And then that's when my ride started, you know? So I always knew I was connected. It didn't just happen. It's sort of been, I've had to fight me way there, you know? And it didn't come from any acting college, nothing like that. I, and I've done over 50 shows now, some iconic characters, and, I'm, and the ride's still going, you know? And um, I, I just, I, I'm very, I, lo I love it. I love it, absolutely love it. And I, I remember paint from Andy Bullying back home for the kids. I always try and encourage the kids to follow their dreams. But that's how I was connected to it since I was a wee little boy. And I just, I just stuck at it. Because sometimes dreams get, adults will squash kids' dreams. And it's not nice. And no, 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 you don't want to do that. You don't want to do this. No, no, I want to do this. No, you, you know, no. They should, you should, everybody should feed the kids dreams, you know. And, you know, big kids have got dreams as well. Never give up. Do you know what I mean? Spencer, thank you so much for spending some time with us and answering questions. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. And some people will see you tomorrow. And I'd like to Spencer Lee Thanks for inviting me, guys.